I literally just stayed up all night. I spent so many hours researching the executive orders to bring you the details all in one short condensed video. So make sure you destroy that like button, make it blue, paint that button blue. Trump just signed into law for executive orders, the unemployment extension, payroll tax cut, student loan forgiveness, eviction ban. Let's break down the details of every single one and what they mean and what's actually happening. Let's give you some timelines on when can I expect unemployment and exactly who and who won't be receiving it because not everybody will be receiving this and not all of these orders are as they seem to be. So without further ado, my name is Zach. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm an accountant. Thank you to everybody that supports the channel, subscribes to the notification bell. If you're not part of that notification squad, make sure you join it because I bring you up to date information just like this. And I also talk about personal finance, investing, basically helping you make more money and have more money in your life. Who doesn't like more money? That's more freedom. All right, let's get straight into it. So the unemployment boost is for $400 per week throughout the end of this year, and it is retroactive up till August 1st. So that week that everybody missed will be in the retroactive payments all the way throughout the end of the year. When will you see this $400 per week? Well, President Trump said we will be seeing it rapidly. Now, here is the problem. Let's, there's two things. Number one, some people are not qualifying for this $400 per week boost. And number two, the timeline may not make sense based on how they're going to pay for this. So let's start with number one. If you make under $100 per week from your state unemployment benefits, you will not qualify for that extra $400 per week. Now, the reason being is probably because people that were making more on unemployment than when they were working, this disincentivizes them because now that they're getting less than 100 from the state, they won't be getting a $400 boost, so they're more incentivized to go back to work. That's probably the one argument on one side. The other argument is, well, that's not really good for these people because they need it the most since they make the least amount of money, but that's just the way these executive orders are. I'm just telling you how it is. So. Under $100, you don't get that $400 boost. Second, the timeline. Donald Trump said that he does not need Congress to pass anything to get more funds for this because from the original stimulus package, the CARES Act, there's extra funds left over for the states and the federal government to draw from in order to pay for this unemployment boost. Now, what exactly are these funds? The DRF and the CRF, okay, the Disaster Relief Fund and the COVID-19 Relief Fund. If we do some quick math, the states are expected to pay $100 per week of that boost, and the federal government is expected to pay $300 per week of that federal boost. When we look at where the states can withdraw from, that is the CRF, and the federal government can withdraw from the DRF. There's two big issues here. Number one, in the Disaster Relief Fund, there's approximately $70 billion. Now, the DRF requires a minimum of $25 billion at all times, leaving it with $45 billion remaining to be spent on unemployment. Now, if one of these two things happen, unemployment will suffer. Number one, if there's a natural disaster or anything of some kind that requires those funds, that's less money going to unemployment. And number two, if you do the math, $45 billion left, there's roughly 31 million Americans on unemployment. At $300 per week, if you multiply those two, that's roughly $9.3 billion per week, which approximates roughly 4.8 weeks in funding for unemployment. So with only 4.8 weeks of funding, how are we supposed to last from now today all the way till the end of 2020, there's a lot more than 4.8 weeks left. So realistically, we're looking at a four to five week time frame where unemployment will be extended, and after that, funds will have to come from somewhere else, or depending on how many people make less than 100 per week, it'll make it more than five weeks, maybe six, seven weeks, depending on how many people make under 100 and actually qualify for this. But regardless, it does not look like there is enough money to cover it until the end of 2020. But the good news is you can expect at least four to five weeks of an extra boost of $400 per week, but don't count on it lasting the entire year. Who knows what will happen? Just be ready for this. Moving on, student loan assistance, student loan forgiveness. Let's talk about this. As you know, the current student loans, federally backed student loans have been at 0% and this was set to expire at the end of September, September 30th, 2020. 
Now this has been extended until the end of the year, December 31st, 2020, meaning you pay 0% interest on your student loans and you can defer your payments, not make any payments until next year. I would recommend if you have the funds, if you have the financial stability to do this, to pay them down right now while it's at 0%. Take advantage of this to clear your student debt during these uncertain times. However, if you are not in the financial situation to do so, then obviously just don't make any payments until next year. The key is that you are allowed to pay this down during this 0% interest rate environment. Let's talk about the payroll tax. This is a little tricky and complicated. This is not an actual payroll payroll tax cut. This is a payroll tax deferment. President Trump is deferring the payroll taxes starting September 1st until the end of December. So not retroactive, not right now in August, but starting September 1st. And it is only a deferment of the employee taxes of 7.65%. So if you take 7.65% of your paycheck, let's say you make $1,000 a week, that's an extra $76.50. You get to keep more of that money for now and at the end of next year, the way it's just deferred, you have to pay that back. But the goal is to have this deferred even longer. President Trump is saying that if he gets elected on November 3rd, he will not only extend that deferral, but remove it and have it forgiven and permanently remove the payroll taxes. This is a little bit sticky because payroll taxes are what funds Social Security. So how are we expected to pay for Social Security if we have no payroll taxes? So those on Social Security, disability, receiving that income, this will hurt those funds for them. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin did acknowledge this saying that we will get funds from the Treasury but looking back in history when Social Security started it was supposed to be self-sustaining and paid for by the American workers and employers not out of the Treasury so this is getting a little political and complicated so for those of you relying on the payroll tax cut just know for now it is only a deferral and you will have to pay it back as the way things stand right now. Now let's talk about evictions, the eviction ban, the eviction moratorium that has expired. This is very uh, important, let me just read this to you. It is the policy of the United States to minimize evictions and foreclosures. The Departments of Health and Human Services and the CDC shall consider whether any measures temporarily halting any residential evictions of tenants for failure to pay rent are reasonably necessary to prevent the further spread of COVID-19. So what does this mean for you? It looks like this is more of a suggestion rather than an order. Basically, the landlords have to deem that if you are being kicked out of your property, if you are a tenant and you're not paying rent for whatever reason, if they kick you out, if that does not help spread COVID, then they have the right to do so. And if they kick you out, but it does help spread COVID, then they can't. But this is very gray. This is There's a lot of loopholes here. A lawyer can easily step in and say, you know what, there's not a lot of COVID cases around here. We're kicking them out. They're going to go X, Y, Z place. They're not going to spread COVID. Goodbye. So the eviction moratorium is not extended. This is just an eviction ban. And it's kind of at the discretion of the landlord. As far as the second stimulus check, your second stimulus check update, as of right now, this can either be good or bad news with all these four executive orders in place. It's too early to tell right now, but if I had to say whether it's good or bad, it could be bad if this delays more negotiation because now there's less urgency since there's more aid being sent to the people. Now Congress can really sit back on their 31 day vacation and do nothing, but it can be good because they've been arguing between the amounts of unemployment and that was a huge negotiation slowing them down from the rest of the bill. So maybe this can cause them to actually come to terms even faster, bring a bill together. Who knows if it's good or bad, too early to tell, but that's where we are right now. Watch one of these two videos if you want to learn more about personal finance and investing. Those are most of the videos on my channel. I will keep you up to date with anything in regards to the stimulus check, unemployment, financial news, personal finance, investing. I got a lot of videos. Click on one of these two videos. I'll see you in one of these two videos. Subscribe with the notification bell. Don't forget to like the video, and I'll see you right now. Bye.